All right, without further ado, let's jump into Romans 14 Unplugged, Feasts and Fast and Food. Oh, my. And um, we're just about near the end of the study. As you can see the table of contents on my screen right now, we're actually in section number um, 15 where it says, how can we make for peace and mutual building? And we're really ready for 16, the conclusions. But before we jump into the conclusions, which is really, really short, like two paragraphs, I want to go back, take about... 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, to go back through the study as an overview since it's been quite a while. Um, And sometimes you can get lost in the forest because of the trees. So let's go back um, through some of the points and remind ourselves where we've come from. This will kind of give us a context as we take a look at the um, conclusions that we've come up with so far. The study itself, uh, if I look at the table of contents, you can see it's broken up into 18 different uh, segment numbers. I'll just read down through each one of those numbers and tell you what we talked about and uh, some of the points that were highlighted. In the introduction, in the background and historical audience, which is um, section number one, you can call them chapters if you want or paragraphs if you want. In the introduction and background audience, I think I'll just click on it, um, we learned from um, quite a few resources that basically Paul is writing to a group of believers in Rome that he's never visited. He's writing it roughly around the late fifth, mid to late 50s of his time in the first century. And um, historically, uh, the church that he's writing to, the church groups, are largely composed of Jews and Gentiles with a Gentile majority, Jewish minority. And part of the reason because Part of the reason behind the um, majority of Gentiles is likely due to what we read in history is the um, the uh, expulsion, the Claudia, Emperor Claudius' expulsion from Rome of Jews in that day, probably earlier in that uh, particular uh, century, so or in the, earlier in that decade, so earlier, maybe like maybe late 40s or early 50s, something sometime around that. Uh, it's hard to pin down. Even historians say it's hard to know uh, with all the f- f- fragmented historical accounts. Um, but what we've come to learn as we um, looked at this particular part of my commentary that impacts our uh, appreciation for the Book of Romans is that um, the Jewish people had been at least at this time, had been forced to be kicked out of Rome. How many of them were expelled? We don't know for certain. Luke tells us in the book of Acts that, um, I'm sorry, in the in his uh, self-titled book, the book of Luke itself, or is it Acts? No, I think it is Acts. I keep getting that, that confused since he wrote both books. Sometimes I can't remember where, which resources fall where. It is Acts uh, 18, 1 and 2, like you can see on my uh, screen right there. Um, he tells us that they were um, expelled from Rome. In fact, we can read this verse here. Acts 18, 1 through 4 out of the ESV says, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. Verse 2, And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontius, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them. And verse 3, And because he was of the same trade, right, uh, tent maker or working with um, leather or something like that, he stayed with them and work, worked worked. Uh, for they were tent makers by trade. For and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. So this is Luke's historical account of the um, of the expulsion. Notice in verse um, two, Luke records that um, uh, Claudius commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. Now uh, the text says all the Jews. Claudius had commanded all the Jews, but When we corroborate what Luke wrote with what other historians have also uh, left for us, and the few that we have, Suetonius and and some of the other uh, writers, uh, Josephus and things like that, um, we end up with a a possibility that Claudius' decree either didn't take full effect, meaning um, not everyone followed through with what he said, or that maybe only a small group of Jews were kicked out at the time, Meaning, when it says all the Jews, it may, be, it may have meant all the Jews of that particular region or of a particular town or um, province or something like that. 
Or it could have just meant um, all the Jews of that particular faction who were deemed troublemakers at the time. Um, maybe enter. So how wide scope, how wide uh, uh, impacting uh, Emperor Claudius's decree was, is important for the letter because it sets a kind of a tone, uh, as we understand, you know, and this, this news would have traveled all the way back to Paul because he, staying in Corinth at the time, met up with these Messianic Jews, Priscilla and Aquila, and they would have given him a first-hand account of what happened. So, for whatever reasons, we at least know that some of the Messianic Jews were also swept up in the degree, in the, um, the decree to get out. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila obviously left. Maybe they left on their own accord. Maybe they were forced to leave. We don't know for sure. But, um, uh, you know, they, it, it seems to me that they, they probably didn't have a choice in the matter, at least according to what Acts tells us here in Acts chapter 18. We do know that Acts is reliable. The, the, the scriptures are trustable, uh, even historically. So, I'm not doubting that the um, uh, expulsion took place, so don't get me wrong. What I'm simply saying is that there's a possibility, given uh, what we read in, his in historical accounts, that um, there may not have been as widespread uh, expulsion as we often like to think or have been told. And if that's the case, then there was a strong enough Jewish presence there that Paul could appeal to the Jewish I'm sorry, to the Gentiles, to continue to connect with the Jewish communities that were left in Rome. Particularly, we do know this, um, The uh, as we're going to read in my own commentary, Claudius himself was murdered in AD 54. I think historians say it was probably his wife that murdered him, stabbed him in the back or something like that with a dagger. And um, thus his decree, as we say, as I read in my commentary, thus bringing his decree to an end and allowing the Jews to return. So that's good news. They returned to Rome in great numbers. And since Paul went on to actually visit Rome a short five years later, so approximately, I say in my commentary, AD 60, then I think it is of no small importance that once he got to Rome, he met with um, non-Christian Jewish synagogue leaders to discuss his particular trial. And we can read about that in Acts chapter 28 right um, here in my commentary. So, in um, conclusion to that section, why is that part important for our particular study in the introduction?